Hey guys, welcome to Treadmill Review Guru. Today we are going to compare the new Peloton Bike Plus with the Wahoo Kicker Bike. These are both high-end bikes with some real distinct features and functionality. Uh, so we're gonna put them head to head and kind of give them a go, see how they compare. The Peloton bike is designed like a regular indoor exercise bike. You have the flywheel in the front, it's got uh, very secure handlebars, the seat slides up and down, forward and back, the handlebars slide up and down, so you've got three points of adjustment. You can lift it up and roll it using the wheels on the front, and of course it has the attached touchscreen. The Wahoo bike, by comparison, looks very different. It looks like a bike. So you have outdoor road bike handlebars. So you've got the drops in there, you've got shifters, you have gears. You can increase and decrease the height of the handlebars, your stack. You can increase and decrease the reach. You can increase and decrease the standover height. So this bike is distinct because it offers a lot of customization features. And as you'll notice, the flywheel is in the back. Now this doesn't affect the way that the bike rides. It just opens up that front area. And part of the reason for that is because it includes incline and decline. So the bike will incline to a 20% incline. It will decline to a negative 15%. And those customization options really give uh, outdoor cyclists the ability to create a bike fit that's similar to your road bike. Just a quick overview of side, size differences. The Peloton bike is 59 inches long, it's 59 inches high, and it's 22 inches wide. It also weighs 140 pounds, so it's a good solid bike. You're gonna feel really steady when you are on top of it. It will support up to 300 pounds, and will fit most riders from about 4'11 up to 6'5". The Wahoo is a little lighter, it, it's made of aluminum and steel, and so it only weighs 93 pounds. Uh, it's, it's considerably lighter, easier to move, but it does feel very stable. I love the way that they have the anchors system on the floor. This bike is 48 inches long and 30 inches wide. So it's a little wider. You can see you kind of got that V-shaped design there, the stabilizers at the back, and it will support up to 250 pounds. So a little lower max weight, but the height difference is roughly the same. It supports riders from about five foot up to about six foot five. So most people are familiar with the Peloton bike. It's been around long enough. Um, you've got the new bike, which has a few more features than the original bike. So this is the new bike plus. It has auto follow, which is something that Peloton added that I really like. And that allows you to kind of set your resistance so it's in a specific range that's targeted for you. And then it will actually follow as the instructor cues, increases or decreases in resistance, that range will adjust um, automatically. You can also adjust it manually if you want to. So that's one thing that I really like about the new bike plus uh, it's a comfortable geometry. So you just have the three adjustment points, but I find that this bike is very easy to make it fit for you. You can hop a ride on just a few things and you're good to go. Um, the handlebars are comfortable and they work really well for riders of different sizes. If you're smaller, you've got kind of that closer horizontal bar. If you lean forward or you're a taller rider, you have the other bar. Um, and it has 100 resistance levels. So those levels are pre-set uh, for you. They've got magnetic resistance. So even as I ride and I increase my resistance, you can't hear anything. The resistance is silent. It also has enough resistance that you can stand up. As an, and as I mentioned before, the weighted flywheel enables you to kind of move around on the bike and you're gonna be able to maintain a nice smooth, smooth cadence. Um, the other thing the Peloton has is obviously the touchscreen. So that seems like an obvious thing, but we're going to talk in just a minute about the Wahoo. The nice thing about a touchscreen is your experience is completely integrated. So the app functions completely seamlessly with the bike. The resistance is instantaneous. You are um, logged into that class. It will pause, stop, reset. So the experience is very intuitive and feels very natural as you're riding along. Um, and you don't really have to know much about cycling. You don't have to have any experience with biking. If you can get on the bike and sit on the saddle, this is a great option. However, one thing you can't do is watch anything besides a Peloton class. So no Netflix, no YouTube, you can't surf the web. We get asked that a lot because it would seem with a touchscreen that you would have those options. 
but really the screen is just designed to display the Peloton app, so that's what you're gonna use it for. So let's compare it with the Wahoo bike. I'm gonna hop on, and this bike's a little different. Now, as I mentioned, the resistance is calibrated based on rider weight and rider power, and there's a little bit of digital control in there. So you're gonna hear just a little bit more noise as I pedal. Can you hear that? Just, it's, not, it's not terrible, but there is just a little bit of noise um, as you move through because it's more of a digital system that, that creates that resistance. Uh, this bike has, as you can see, gears, and you can actually set it up so that it will match the gearing system on your road bike. You can adjust the shifter controls, you can adjust the number of gears, you can um, go in, you go into the Wahoo app and choose the number of chain rings on the front, the rear cassette, so you can customize this bike to be extremely specific to match up with whatever bike you're used to riding outside. However, what you can't really do you can stand up and lift those hips as if you were riding up out of the saddle. And it certainly provides enough resistance to do that. But this bike isn't really designed for like dancing and stuff, like I've mentioned. Like you're not gonna ride hands-free, you're not gonna lift weights, that's not what this is for. Um, it also has incline and decline. So you can manually adjust the incline, and there's your 20% grade and then I can take the decline all the way down. And one thing I really like about the incline and decline on this is it feels very real. It's not just those handlebars lifting up and down, the whole bike frame moves in such a way that it really feels like you're riding either up the hill or down the hill. And a little LED display here on the side shows you the grade that you're at. You have brakes, and you've got that flywheel in the back that just moderates the resistance as you ride. So the functionality of the bikes are, is a little bit different because this is designed for someone familiar with cycling. And the setup, I will say quite honestly, is not super easy. The first thing you have to do when you get your Wahoo bike is figure out the right bike fit. And so you can either put your measurements in the app, you can take a picture of your road bike, or if you've had a professional bike fit before, you can input those metrics and then it will tell you how to adjust the bike. But it's not quite as easy to just jump on and go as the Peloton is. The same with the gearing system. You've gotta go in, you can just choose the default settings, which is fine, um, but you have to make sure that you input the gearing system that you want, you adjust the shifting controls how you want, and then you wanna go in and put in your um, functional threshold power so that the resistance can be set based on your level of um, power that you produce, your level of wattage. So this is fantastic for people who are familiar with cycling. If you're an outdoor road cyclist and you wanna ride inside, if you really want targeted metrics, you wanna dial in that resistance, you wanna have the absolute perfect bike fit, you wanna have a gearing system that's set up just like the one outside, this is great. If you just wanna jump on and go, it's a little bit more advanced and might be kind of frustrating and overwhelming for a new user. So the nice thing about the Wahoo bike is it will sync with any number of third-party apps. You can use Zwift, you can use Wahoo's program called System, which is actually an updated version of Sufferfest. Uh, you can use any, any number of apps and the bike is Bluetooth enabled to sync with that particular app. Um, so there are some distinct differences to these bikes. They're both really cool and really unique. And for the, for the right rider, either one would be a fantastic option. So they're gonna to appeal to different types of riders. The Peloton is great for new riders, someone who wants to exercise at home. It's very easy to just jump on and use. In fact, right now, Peloton includes delivery and assembly with the purchase of the bike. We don't know if that will continue in the future. The Wahoo bike, I, I really wouldn't recommend to someone who isn't familiar with cycling because the customization options and some of the specific measurements and metrics that you have to put in are quite targeted. So this is better suited for outdoor road cyclists who are already familiar with biking, 
who have good balance and stability so that you can handle that incline and decline really well, uh, who are familiar with gearing setup so that you can adjust the gearing how you want and can put in your functional threshold power and other riding metrics so you're going to be able to get that specific targeted resistance. I'm a road cyclist, we have several road cyclists here, and just getting it customized and set up for each individual person, it, it takes just, just a bit of time. So that is something to factor in, but then once you've got it calibrated, you're good to go and you don't have to mess with it again. This bike is excellent for people who want to use different apps and ride competitively against other riders. So I get asked a lot of times on any number of exercise bikes, will this sync with Zwift? Will I be able to use Sufferfest? And on the Wahoo bike, you can. It will sync with any number of third-party apps, so you're not locked into a, a specific subscription. You can have more than one. Uh, you can set up your pain cave and just ride to your heart's content. The Wahoo bike is a little more expensive, so it's about $1,000 more than the Peloton, and that does not include a, a delivery or assembly, so you're going to have to pay a little extra for delivery and then assemble it yourself. Uh, but it's certainly worth it once you get it, because it just provides unique, distinct features that you're not going to find on another type of exercise bike. So we do have individual reviews of both of these bikes. Visit us at treadmillreviewguru.com for a written review with details and specs and pictures. And if you'd like any questions answered or you have any comments, leave us a question below. We'd love to hear what you think. As always, we appreciate your time that you spend with us here at Guru. If you liked this video, take just a minute to subscribe and give us a thumbs up, and we will see you again soon.